Hi, the first part of this video is an animation on how a solenoid valve on a domestic appliance works. Most valves work in a similar way, although there are some differences depending on what they're used for. But as I said, this is about domestic appliances, so in this case we'll be dealing with water. As you can see, I've listed all the main parts in this first diagram, and the following sequence will show you how they all function. The water is fed into the valve via a hose connected to a domestic water supply. The first obstacle it encounters is the fine mesh filter in the mouth of the valve. This filter has two purposes. The main one is to prevent the, any grit from getting into the diaphragm, because even a small particle can prevent it from sealing properly, and this would allow water to trickle by when the valve is shut, which would eventually fill the drum with water if left overnight. The second function for the filter is to take the initial force out of the incoming water flow. The next obstacle for the water is the restrictor. This is a rubber washer fitted over a central moulding which is located in the mouth of the valve. The pressure of the water hitting this restrictor greatly reduces its force as it enters the diaphragm section of the valve. The diaphragm has a number of small bleed holes around the edge and a large hole in the centre which is covered by a metal piston with a rubber tip. As the water enters the diaphragm section, some of it seeps through the bleed holes which fill the cavity above the diaphragm. Once the water has filled this section of the valve it has nowhere to go, so it acts as a stop preventing the diaphragm from lifting. In this case it's the water pressure itself which is holding the valve closed. The main part of the metal piston is inside a plastic sleeve which runs through the middle of an electric coil. When the coil is energised it produces a magnetic field and this lifts the piston off the diaphragm. The central hole in the diaphragm is now exposed and the water that was trapped can now run out allowing the diaphragm to lift and the water to flow through. When the power to the coil is turned off, the spring above the piston, which has been compressed until now, can push it down onto the diaphragm again and block the central hole. The water entering the bleed holes once again has no exit, so the diaphragm is forced to close. Here we have the actual valve, or a cutaway version anyway. It's not recommended to try repairing a solenoid valve because there are no serviceable parts on it. This video is just to demonstrate how they work, not how to repair them. Although the filter's loose here, it's actually very tight when it's in a complete valve, as you'll see in a minute. This is the only part manufacturers advise you should maintain or keep clean. The restrictor is also a bit harder to get out normally. The only reason you may want to take it out is if you have very low water pressure. And this can happen if the water tank that feeds the machine is on the same level as the machine itself. In which case you wouldn't have a very great head of water and it would take a long time to fill the machine. The coil is not shown here but it will be mentioned a little bit later. The piston housing unscrews but it's very tight and not designed for on site maintenance. The diaphragm fits onto the piston housing and the outer lip of it is held tight against the valve body when the two sections are screwed together. And, as you can see, the piston is a free radical within the housing, as is the spring. The diaphragm, as you can see, has a large hole in the centre and small bleed holes around the outer edge. The central hole is the one covered by the piston and the exit point for the trap water. When removing the filter, make sure you grip it tight and pull it out in one movement if possible. This way the grit around it will clear the valve body and not drop back in where it could get lodged under the diaphragm and cause a leak in the seal. Once the filter has been taken out, it's always a good idea to rinse it under running water, even if it looks clean. By doing this, you can be sure it is clean from when you replace it. To remove the restrictor, you'll need to grip it with a pair of long nose pliers and pull it out. But be aware, there is no lip on it to grip hold of. The section in the centre of the valve is not removable, so don't try it. It's there to accommodate the restrictor and narrow the path for the water flow. If you're not sure whether the coil on the solenoid is faulty or not, then do a continuity test. But be aware that the reading will only show on your meter for a few seconds and then it will clear. This is because of the type of resistance produced by these coils. If there's no change in the status of your meter, then it's quite probable the coil is faulty. And although the coils are not sold separately, you can still accomplish a short term repair by swapping the coils on the fabric conditioner valve, if your machine has one. It's a simple procedure and can be carried out with the valve still attached to the machine. But be careful not to be overzealous when levering the coils off or you could damage the piston housing. Once the coils have been swapped the fabric conditioner valve will no longer function but the previously faulty valve will. This is not a repair but will get you out of trouble for a while. A new valve will be needed at some point. 
Solenoid valves vary according to where on the machine they're located and how they're fitted to it. This double valve is used for the cold water which also applies to the rinses and fabric conditioner. The triple valve is usually associated with the cold fill on washer dryers while the single valve can be hot or cold supply. There are also low pressure valves available which were designed especially for machines that have very slow fill rate due to the water tank location. Another reason you'd encounter slow filling is if your hose was slightly bent or kinked which is why the correct end of the hose to fit onto the valve is the section with the bent connector. Hot hoses get very supple after a while and if they're slightly twisted or bent any restriction can be magnified until it is completely blocked. On behalf of Selfix UK we'd like to thank you for watching this video and hope you found it interesting. Goodbye.